Have you ever felt like your creative well has gone dry and you just don't know what to paint? Maybe you've been waiting all day to paint and then when you finally sit down to do it, you got nothing. <laughs> your mind is a blank, you feel pressured and stressed to do something great with that blank piece of paper. You just don't know what it is. Uh, well, I want to talk today about creativity, how to get your creative mo mojo back when it seems to have disappeared and how to get through those dry spells so that you can get back into painting again. I'm Angela Fair. Here on my channel, I'm all about helping you to become your own favorite watercolor artist. Let's get started. Usually we work, we move right to my work surface after I say that, um, but today I want to talk just for a minute about creativity. We have this idea that creativity is a destination or it's a thing that we need to have and hold on to. We put it on like a coat. Um, it's just this thing and creativity is not a thing. Something I've realized over my years of painting is that creativity is an action. It's a verb. It's something that we do. It's the processes in our brain connecting. Uh, creativity is about ideas. So you're taking the things you know and new ideas and bringing them together with this big mashup of beautiful result in your paintings. And when we want to be creative, we don't get to copy. Being creative means finding new ways, new paths. So really learning how to let ideas flow is a big, big part of enabling creativity in your working process. As an artist, you want to be creative and you need to be creative like you. This can feel like a lot of pressure when time is at a premium, when you come to the studio and you know you have a set amount of time, you have to use it uh, now, you have to get creative right now, and that can feel like a block. And I'm just coming back from a trip. I've been gone for t over two weeks. I haven't painted in that amount of time. I didn't paint a lot before we left because I was packing and getting ready and getting my business organized before I left. And so here I am back in the studio after this time spent um, away from the studio, away from my paintbrush. One thing I really like to do when I've been away from painting, I haven't been painting a while and I might be feeling blocked, is just to come to the studio with the purpose of painting. And that sounds really obvious and <laughs> um, that of course, what am I else am I gonna do? I'm gonna come and paint, but I'm not coming to make a painting. And I think that's the difference. I'm coming to paint, to involve myself, engage myself in the activity of painting. And in that process of engaging myself in the activity of painting, I'm going, I can find my creativity again. It's about the process rather than making some perfect painting project. Uh, I don't need a product right now. I just need to come back to the studio and find my way into the process again. So let's move over to the work surface and we'll do a little bit of painting. We cannot just say, okay, I'm gonna be creative now. Creativity happens when, almost when you're looking the other way. So I like to start out my painting uh, paintings by looking the other way, by planning to just paint with no expectations. This is a bit of palette dirt and a little bit of lavender and just lay that first brush stroke on the paper. Um, really, uh, my goal for letting creativity happen is about play and being really playful with what uh, is happening on the paper and learning to be present in the moment. So when I'm feeling blocked, uh, a good goal actually is to plan to just focus on that one first brush stroke. So here's one brush stroke. Um, well, I guess it's basically two. <laughs> I've put my brush on the paper twice and, uh, and it's really a, just a very simple color. There's not a lot happening here, very quiet. And I'm going to grab a little bit of this color, which I'm not sure what it is. I think this is, I just bought M. Graham's Quinacridone Rust, and I think that's what this is. So we're going to touch that to the paper. And we're going to be present in the moment, just watching it move. So when I'm feeling blocked, my very first thing to do is just give myself to the process rather than really releasing myself from that burden of trying to make my painting into a thing. And when I'm not trying to make a thing, there's no, no, there's no possibility of failure. There's just being here, watching the paint move. And uh, hoping that something pretty emerges. Of course, we're always hoping. 
Sometimes when you're feeling blocked, it can be because you have too many ideas. And we'll talk about that as well. Um, you know, every... Uh, maybe you haven't painted in a while, so you have this big stack of reference photos. And I have that. I'm coming home from vacation. And so I have photos. Oh, uh, so many amazing scenery uh, photos that I've taken. We road tripped across Arizona and Utah. And we saw so many great things. Look at that beautiful color that's just flowing right in there. That is gorgeous. And uh, so then how do you pick the first one and what to do? And uh, I really feel, again, creativity happens when I'm looking the other way. So I'm not even looking at those photos right now. Um, my memories of the states of Arizona are in the back of my head. The beautiful red dirt of Utah. Um, the subtle beauty and mystery of the desert. All of that is inside of me. Um, the person who experienced those places. And all of that is actually a part of this painting, whether I'm painting it or not. Uh, we have this wonderful storehouse of experiences and insights that influence our paintings. And when I just show up and give myself to the process like I'm doing right now, we actually are I'm actually creating an optimum condition for being able to paint uh, that scenery, the desert that I saw. And oh my goodness, look right here. This light area, just letting the water flow there, and I'm actually going to soften. There's a crisp edge in here that I'm going to soften. I'm going to just let a little bit of fluidity happen there. I'm adding a little bit of water, but just trying to keep the balance the same as what it was originally. Not a big drip of water that would create a watermark. So as I've added that, um, I have this beautiful stream of beam of light coming down here. And now I'm going to start, now that I've started to kind of connect with my painting, my I actually have this physical response to the beauty that's happening on the page. Now I want to start to engage with that painting and see um, maybe a little bit deeper and see how I can evolve this. But I really wanted, I, I really make it a priority to, um, to just pay attention and feel connected to my painting. And when we were in Arizona, I learned a lot about the saguaro cactus. Uh, from my students in the workshop that I taught, and that was really fun. Uh, I didn't even know how to pronounce it. I felt very silly because I was, was always pronouncing the G, saguaro. That's not how that's not how to say it. And and then I think I got it wrong when I was trying to make the G silent, and I was still saying it wrong. So um, I'm learning. I think I have it right now. And in this process of experiencing new places and then coming to the studio and letting myself just kind of be. Um, look how pretty that is. That feeling of light coming through there is really giving this painting. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. Making this into a painting before I've even done anything. Um, and I wouldn't have been able to do that if I'd said, okay, now I'm going to paint a cactus so on the hill and the sky. Um, instead, giving myself to that moment and just, I keep saying giving myself to, and it seems cliche, um, just starting to paint and really trying to be connected to the painting process. That's what I was doing. That's what I was looking for. And in, in that process, I'm going to mix some of that rust with some of that original blue and look at the gray that it makes. They're really nice complements to each other. I'm going to put some of that over here. Um, by working just to be here with the painting, um, with the goal of um, just learning to relax and to pay attention to the painting before it ever became a thing, um, it really helped me to start to see potential in my scene. And I think once this dries a little bit more, we can put some little tiny saguaro back there and make it look like a distant hill. I'm not ready to do that quite yet. But while we're waiting, um, let's play some more with this neutral mixture made by the Quinn Rust and the Lavender. It makes this really great brownish gray. And I think we can use that for some of our shrubbery in here. We're just going to drop a drip there. 
because I'm working wet and wet at this point, I started with dry paper, like I always do. You start with dry paper and you get that really great first brush stroke that you can build out from. And as the paint um, begins to cover the paper, now I have wet and wet happening. And, uh, the, but this beautiful soft underpainting of color. The paint, qualities of the paint are something else that I'm paying attention to. With my little da with the, my dagger brush that I'm using today, and I think you have just missed all the brush strokes I just made. Scooting up. Okay, so I've just been kind of whisking the point of the brush along here to make some grassy bits, some shrubbery. Maybe there's spiky cacti. Add a little bit of zoocyte, which is what I used for the saguaro up here. It's a lovely gray, dark, dark gray green. And as soon as I start thinking, <laughs> creativity starts to suffer. Because as soon as I start going, well now I'm painting a desert scene and here's the saguaro. Um, but the very next thing I want to do is paint everything I saw on that hill that day. Um, we were in outside of Tucson at the Saguaro National Forest and they're everywhere. But there was also yellow flowers, um, wildflowers, there were different types of cacti, and there was a lot of rock, of course. And so then my tendency is to want to paint all those details. That is not going to serve the painting. I don't want to lose this beautiful effect of light. And I don't want to spell everything out. We want to hint. Um, rather than shout, if that makes sense. So let's try um, this. I like the balance here with this uh, cacti here. So a cactus, I'm, my plurals are suffering. And so how do we support that dark shape? Um, maybe with some more darks down here. Let's go a little darker in the zoocyte. Just a few marks can create a darker um, counterpart that balances this out. We can add a little bit of dark value here, also as a counterpart. And uh, take take the taking time, not rushing. I also see, and I don't know if you can see it, let's go in a little closer. Right in here there's some beautiful line that was created with my thirsty brush. I put in this dark wash of grey and then as I started to kind of saw, spread it out I used my brush to kind of just pull along here and because my brush was thirsty like a sponge it would lift the line out rather than um, just smoothly um, moving paint or adding color. Um, I was actually removing it. So I get this beautiful texture in there, which is actually, I don't know if it helps the realism of the scene, but I think it's this beautiful texture right at my focal point, which actually serves the painting really well. So let's see if we can use the zoocyte and the Quinn rust. Just, yeah, it gives us a bit of a brown, which I think I, I, I think will be helpful. Let's see, oh, drop in, drop in color. Let's see if we can use that brown. I'm going to lift that a little bit to create maybe another cactus, some more bushes, something over here. I want distant saguaro and I don't want to lose my light. Oh, there's a rock. Just made a rock. That works. <laughs> um, Uh, really notice that creativity doesn't need to be forced. In fact, creativity cannot be forced. Um, nobody can force you to be creative and you cannot force yourself to be creative, but you want to create conditions that are optimal for being creative. And a lot of that is just being open to possibilities. Uh, the people who invented uh, the wacky stuff like Velcro and post-it notes and super glue, WD-40, um, I think even ketchup was invented. These things were invented by people who were actually trying to do something else. But when they saw the possibilities in what they did end up making, that was when they <laughs> had their breakthrough. They ended up making something different than they'd planned. And in watercolor, we need to be open to those possibilities as well. Oh, I don't know if I want to add much more here. I love this big rock that just emerged by that accidental sideways brush stroke. Uh, let's see if we can f encourage another um, bit of rocky rocky texture maybe up in here. 
Um, I think that will balance out our painting really well if we can do it successfully. Um, rocks can are actually better painted um, softer rather than harder. We see all the lines and marks in the rocks and we often think um, that we need to paint all those cracks and make our rocks look very um, geometric and I've actually found that for my for my own experience painting rocks usually I get a better result when I keep it soft and allow the different colors and shadows to flow into each other. It's weird but it works. And a little bit of line here, negative painting to suggest grasses. Um, let's go back to the zoocyte and we'll create, we'll nestle those rocks into the bushes here by creating a little bit of line to push them back. Those dark colors will come forward. I was going to paint some distant saguaro, like uh, this was going to be a hill and I thought this might be a hill and I just haven't, I just don't know if it will serve my painting or not. I'm hesitant. Um, I think I'm going to try it anyhow because if I mess it up I'll just do it again. I don't feel like just uh, this one painting is the only painting. Um, do, do your experimenting. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of line to my saguaro, those vertical lines that groove along the, is it called a trunk? The, the body of the cactus. That will help give, bring this cactus forward. I'd love to add some violet to it because I often see in all those scarred bits um, violet hues. But I think for this painting, that would be a mistake. But look at how that line helps it um, just come a little bit more into focal point position again. Now, this is still pretty wet. I'm very hesitant to put in those little cacti while it's this damp. We'll give it a try. But it might be something that would work better later on. We'll just see. I'm going to use a very dry brush. Not thirsty dry, but just a very basically neutral, adding very little water to the painting. And we'll see if we can suggest a soft, distant hillside. And my brush is moister right now, so you can see how that color immediately goes down and blurs on the paper. Then I'm going to quickly fuss over it to adjust those lines. Looking through the viewfinder to see if um, if my values are good. I'm not feeling 100% happy with that. Just keeping it subtle. Now we'll go back to the saguaro there again. The first one that I painted has kind of disappeared. I don't know. Might be making the scene too busy, but that's okay. It's really okay to just experiment and make mistakes. And I think if you're feeling stifled creatively, it could very well be that you haven't been allowing yourself that space to explore and experiment and just blunder your way through sometimes. We really learn, we, we need to learn what works and what doesn't work. Let's use a little bit of zoocyte to create some shrubby, chunky bits here. Make that hill seem hilly. I don't know. 
Um, let's back it up and take a look at the painting as a whole. That's a really good way to know if it's working or not. If the painting works as a whole, we don't have to worry too much about the small bits and pieces that might not be working so well. Uh, before we finish up the video, I just want to take a minute and thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a subscriber, for liking and commenting on this video and uh, the other ones on my channel. It's because of YouTube that I've been able to teach students from all over the world, here and on my website at angelafair.com. Thank you for being a part of that. So let's talk about creativity blockers. I started out feeling a little blank creatively, not sure what to do, feeling like I should paint my Arizona vacation, but not certain that I could do it justice, that I really knew uh, enough about my, inv my environment there to be able to paint it well. So rather than launch immediately into pulling out my reference photos and going to paint, um, I started out just looking to relax um, by playing with paint. No expectations. Simple. Two colors. Um, that one big statement brush stroke. And being connected to what's happening on the paper brought forth the seeds that of the scenes that I'd seen in my in Arizona and was so I was able to put them on the paper giving your creativity room to come out by doing some of this playful um, exploration letting yourself just paint for the love of painting when uh, it really helps the creativity to wake up I try very hard to focus on fun to help my creativity come forth. And that's probably the number one tip that I'd have for you if you're struggling with your creativity is really take some time to play, to fill some paper with paint uh, and just, just for the sake of painting.